Hi, my name is Cameron Knight and I'm here with you again today for another Tuts Plus photography tutorial. Today we're going to be photographing some jewelry and in order to get the best possible image we're going to be using flags. Flags are very simple pieces of equipment. They're usually black or white. Uh, they're usually made of cardstock or paper and they're used to control the reflections that are coming off of shiny objects. So today we're going to be taking a look at all of that while photographing some great jewelry from a local artist uh, in my area whose name is Nikki Zaylor. She uh, runs an Etsy store called Love Root and uh, her jewelry is just fantastic and a lot of it uh, just fits this type of work really well. It has shiny reflective surfaces at different angles and things like that so it makes it uh, pretty difficult to get a nice good picture of it but through the use of flags, we're going to try to get some really nice images today. So we're going to start off with a nice necklace that she has here with some stones that are hanging from it. And we're going to be using a soft box in order to shoot today. We're going to be using just one single light in a soft box. Um, behind me, you can see the seamless backdrop that we're going to be using. Um, this is just a roll of paper, standard kind of butcher paper seamless backdrop arrangement on a background stand. And I'm just going to be using a wire to fire my flashes. So that'll make it pretty straightforward and easy to use. No uh, tricky wireless setups today to worry about failing on me. So let's go ahead and get set up and I'll show you the basic arrangement of the lights and I'll show you how the photo looks without flags and then with flags. Okay, so here's the setup, the basic setup. You can see the jewelry is here. You might not be able to see it very well since it's in profile, but the jewelry's here. I also have my softbox right above the jewelry pointed down at about a 45 degree angle. Um, the reason I want to do this is so I can illuminate the background relatively evenly as well as the subject. The, my softbox is pretty big and with the flat surface in front of the jewelry and the surface behind the jewelry, the light's going to bounce around really well and provide a very even lighting. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I have a telephoto lens on. It's a 70-210 uh, to 210 macro. It um, has a macro function. So I'm going to back up a little bit and shoot in really tight on this. Um, this is going to be the basic setup for all of our all of our shots, but uh, this is going to be the first test shot to see kind of what it looks like generally, and then we're going to add some flags, a black flag and then a white flag, so we can see what the how it changes the image. So let's get started. So you can see here with this image, there's a lot of great detail in the stones that are a part of the necklace at the bottom. And there's also a lot of detail even in the uh, chain, the copper chain that links everything together. You can see the very fine uh, markings, that kind of texture that the chain has. But you can also see that the front of the stones are all very kind of bright and shiny. So with a black flag, I hope that might cut down on that a little bit. Um, but let's add it in and see. So now I want to explain to you how a flag works to control reflections. So what we're going to be using first is the dark flag, a black flag essentially. And it's going to be placed at the incidence angle of our camera. Let me explain how that works. So light is coming from my softbox and hitting these, this object, right? It's illuminating it from a certain direction, kind of from above, and it's going to cause the, the object to be illuminated. What is also going to happen is any of these really reflective surfaces of these stones are going to reflect back to the camera whatever angle they see. So if they are seeing something white, like the flash for instance, like you see this with glasses a lot, any angles of these rocks that are facing the light are going to show up very, very, very white. And they're going to reflect back to, the, to my camera as very bright. Now, all the angles that are not facing directly toward the flash are going to reflect back different colors, right? So whatever's in the environment. If I had a giant piece of red felt over here, uh, angles that were facing, well, well, that were kind of facing that angle, that were going to bounce that image, would be red um, if that red thing was illuminated. So what we're going to do is control some of the angles because this isn't a flat surface. This is, uh, has a bunch of varied, varied angles on it. What we're going to do is control that, some of them, by putting something dark in front of the object to try to get as many of those angles as we can. 
And what I'm going to use to do that is a piece of cardboard with a hole cut in it, essentially. So you can see here, one side is dark, a dark brown color, and it will be even darker because it won't be illuminated. And then I have another side that's white, and that is going to be my white reflector. And then this is my dark flag. So white flag, dark flag, uh, reversible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot through the hole on the side of this to, uh, to, to photograph my object. When I have the dark side pointed toward the object, all of those facets that are facing in this direction are going to be seeing a dark object and are not going to be illuminated. If I flip it around and do a white surface, all of the objects that are facing, that are going to be reflecting off of the, this direction, are going to see a white surface, an illuminated white surface, because uh, the light is going to hit the background and reflect onto the, the foreground element. So they'll be seeing a white object. So the best way I can think to do this is to just shoot and show you the images. So the first thing we're going to do is set it up so my dark flag is placed toward the object. And I'm going to go ahead and shoot a photo. So as you can see here, compared to our first image, there's a lot more dark textured surfaces within the object. It makes it look a lot more textured that gives a lot more local contrast to the surface. Um, giving it more depth, uh, more dynamic range. It covers more dynamic range, so it makes it seem even more textured. Um, this is probably the image I would use if I were to submit this to a catalog or, or something like that. I would use an image like this because the dark flag brings out the texture. So now I want to switch it up and point the white surface toward the object and shoot another photo. So in this image, you can see that the textures that are some of the facets that were facing forward, directly forward toward our flag, are actually brighter. So it actually reduces the local contrast and makes it actually seem like a bit of a flatter piece, uh, which is an interesting thing to do. Uh, again, it's not what I would probably choose to do with this particular object. I would want to emphasize the texture, not de-emphasize it. But it, this, with the white flag, actually does show you a difference uh, between how dark flags and white flags work. What's going to happen in our next image is we're going to use a flatter object, so it's going to seem, uh, it's going to even seem more obvious what's happening. So for my next shot, I've got a pair of flat earrings that are made of stone, and they actually are very reflective and have a flat surface more like a mirror or something that's really, that you would imagine is flat and reflective. And what we're going to do now is take a picture of this with a white flag and then a black flag so you can see the difference. And this will be very, very apparent um, because you'll see that the outer exposure won't change. Uh, the exposure of the actual surface won't change, but it appears that the surface of the object, the, the exposure on the surface of the object changes. So I'm just going to do this very quickly. Um, the way that you can tell where to place your flag is to simply imagine, especially for flat surfaces, is to simply imagine a laser beam coming out of your camera from the angle where you're going to be shooting and imagine where that laser beam is going to go um, after it hits the surface of your object. So I'm going to go ahead and get in position for the shot and my camera is going to be pointed down at the subject from about here, about above my head. So I'm going to place my flag, and in this situation, I'm just going to hold it. Um, you can get a light stand and a clamp and hold flags that way, but I'll just hold it with my hand. Um, my flag will need to be just next to my light, which you can see is up here in this corner. It will need to be just back behind my light right there. So I will go ahead and shoot a shot with a white flag and then a black flag, and I will show you each of those once, we're, once we have them shot. So as you can see in this first image with the white flag, the surface doesn't necessarily look bad, it just looks a little washed out. When you look at the surface, there's not a true black in there, although you can see a true black in the shadow underneath. Um, those are all indications that you're getting flare 
from a from a white surface or even if your flash is behind there you'd see the same type of reflection on your surface although it'd probably be brighter when you look at this next image you can see that the background surfaces the the hooks the shadow none of that changes exposure i use the exact same exposure on my camera but what you're seeing is that the black flag acting as a absorber of light the surface of these earrings is not reflecting any light because there's nothing at the incidence angle from my, where I'm shooting to reflect. It's just a black, dark surface. So it makes it so that it is just the light that's appearing from the flash on the camera as opposed to another surface reflecting back like a mirror image. So again, with textures like this, you probably would want to use a black flag. But you'd notice if you were shooting with natural light in a white room with white walls that you would get that washed out appearance. You can especially see the difference when you hold these images side by side. Here you can really tell the difference between using a black flag and a white flag. Um, no change in exposure, none of, that, none of that stuff. It was just the flag and the flag's position. And the flag wasn't blocking any of the flash. It's all just the reflective surface of the object and what that's actually seeing. So if it were a mirror, it would be what that you'd be seeing in that mirror from your shooting position. So I hope you enjoyed this jewelry shoot today, really simple kind of shoot, but the main object here was to get you to learn a little bit about flags and how they operate. So not only you can use them for traditional reflective surfaces, maybe like glass or something like that, but you can also use them for multifaceted objects like the stone necklace that we used at the beginning of the shoot. Thanks again for following along. I can't wait to see you guys back here for the next video. Have a great day.